Well, looks like Mikel Arteta is caught up in what we call the Romeo Lavia dilemma on whether to sign him at Arsenal or not, as he is really trying to push to see that he strengthens his midfield. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where you watching us from? I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, we are also talking for Ron Balogan, a certain credible journal revealing to us that Balogan is not, not, is not ready to be an Arsenal player and he might be really looking to really spend another season away from Arsenal, not alone or with a permanent cell. Emery Smith Rowe coming out and sounding a warning to everyone who is ruling him, ruling him out to be one of those players to be part of that Arsenal side that is going to be playing more regularly into the Arsenal squad of the season of 2023-2024. Smash the like button close to 400 likes onto this channel and don't forget to subscribe because we want to hit 20,000 subscribers before the end of this month as last month we hit 15,000 15, subscribers and this month we are calling in for 5,000. Before, but, before, but, but Sorry, we are calling in for 5,000 subscribers add them on to the 15,000 to make it 20,000 subscribers. Let us get out of this transfer window <coughs> because it's ending on the 1st of September when we've gone ahead to double the number of subscribers we've been having. And I think the Lord God has really gone ahead, has made it happen. Not so. It's a Sunday. Welcome back from church. Those who really went and those that are really going right now, self journey and the Almighty Lord really, really pay you back for the foots you've gone ahead to make for him my muslim friends and subscribers and viewers allah is the way to go and don't forget to pray five times a day as it's your cult and a normal that you guys got used to now let's start off with romeo lavia fabrizio romano came out and really told us that Aston have gone ahead to even contact southampton as far as the as far as their pursuit of romeo lavia a 19 year old belgian international is concerned now some huge story coming in from Jacobs Ben, one of the credible journalists I've seen that I do really treasure a lot onto this or around this football transfer world has gone ahead and really issued a very huge statement that most of you really need to know. He was onto the Give Me Sport, and this is what he had to say about Ramel Lavia to Arsenal. <coughs> he said, Lavia might be available at more of a bargain rate especially with Southampton going down. He could also be one to watch, but I sense that Arsenal will want to clear out a little bit and assess in the early part of the preseason without necessarily bringing in too many more first. Right? So, after saying that, he concluded by telling us that Ateta has to think about the balance of the group and he will also want to assess the chemistry in the new signings. Now, this means there is a lot of difficulty <coughs> for Arsenal to land more signings after getting in Kai Havertz, Declan Rice, and Julian Timber. For Julian Timber and Declan Rice, <coughs> most anticipating, we, we anticipate that next week it's going to be done and dusted. Those studios will be announced and that will take the tally of Arsenal's total expenditure so far in the summer transfer window to 210 million pounds that is a huge expenditure coming in from the arsenal side and if at all you know what it means it means that arsenal just need to go out and really make some sales as jack was ben is telling us meaning that ateta is in dilemma because he would love to get in ramel lavia the plan of the season was simple to get in two central defensive midfielders you know and they wanted to get one attack-minded midfielder that's it who could play off the right attacking side of the midfield and could also double as a false number nine and that is in Kai Havertz they got the player immediately now Ramel Lavia is one of those players that Ateta came in through to really identify to really line up as a replacement sorry or sorry not a replacement an alternative for Moise Quesido and I would like to understand that there might be something special that went on in between Arsenal and Chelsea to late Arsenal have Moise Quesido, sorry to let Chelsea have Moise Quesido and Chelsea's Hale Kai Havertz to Arsenal as it stands. And uh, after backing out or pulling out of the Moise Quesido deal, Mikel Arteta lined up 
Romeo Lavia to be one of those players that he would love to see play for his side. They even went ahead to contact Southampton. Southampton confirmed to them that all what we want is he us out. We want 45 million pounds. And Arsenal look at this as a very huge asking price put onto the 19 year old because the team was really relegated and they feel like he's less than that amount of money. But if they are to go to dance with the teams of Southampton, that will take their tally to 100 to 260 million pounds to get in Ramel Lavia. So that is something that Jacobs Ben is hitting about that Arsenal need to really do what we call some clearances to see to it that they really assess in the early part of the preseason without necessarily bringing in too many more after bringing in three more players. And uh, <clears throat> Lavia is a very good player and if Arsenal is to really keep Thomas Partey right, I think they might find it hard to bring in Romel Lavia and he might find himself going to Liverpool. Remember Liverpool came in through to rival Arsenal on Romel Lavia though yesterday they signed Sobzolai. Sobzolai. Is it called Sobzolai? The central midfielder coming in from RB Leipzig and uh, at this time it's really looking great for Liverpool and they're looking in for central defensive midfielder and Arsenal look at Lavia as one of those players that if they don't get him in now <coughs> they won't have a chance to get a player of that quality at a cheaper price that is it why next summer <laughs> that is 2024 even if Pate doesn't leave today or this summer and stays and Jorginho stays, Xhaka might leave. You will need to sign in a central defensive midfielder who is a Premier League proven player. That is it. So, because of the age of Thomas Pate and Jorginho, Jorginho will be 30 to 33, Pate will be 31 years of age, meaning that he won't be able to compete with the rest of the teams. As when Mikel Arteta was going to the transfer window, he aligned all. He clinged to his bosses that we should get in players who are really more physical and their intensity is way up the ordinary. That's why you sit you sit it they're going for Declan Rice, Julian Timba, Romeo Lavia, and um, Declan Rice because he knows that he needs that physical presence. He needs that athleticism in the midfield of Arsenal and he knows it very well like a book. So Arsenal won't want to miss out on such a signing as next season sorry next summer it will require them like 60 70 million pounds to sign in another player and yet they would like to invest huge in other departments and this might be the last huge investment for Arsenal in the midfield for the next two three summers as if at all you're having in Romeo Lavia Declan Rice I think for this defensive pivot that is sorted and with the presence of Odegaard Kai Havertz, um, Emily Smith Rowe, Fabio Vieira, Nwaneri coming in through. I think they might find themselves taking close to two more transfer windows without signing midfielders and going in for like central defenders, going in for wide players at the side of Arsenal. So, Ateta is in what we call an assessment dilemma for Romeo Lavia, as he needs to sell to it that he really gets in players that. He needs to sell to create space for the arrival of Ramel Lavia and to raise money. Now that means Arsenal, after spending 210 million on three players, all what they need is to spend money, sorry, to cash in on certain players and then get money to really get in those players. So to get in the players that they want, like selling in for Ron Balogan, like for 50 million pounds, KNTNE, 35, 40 million pounds, then um, which other player? Mm, there is uh, um, Thomas Pat is needed of living, Xhaka Granite, 20 million pounds. And if at all they can sell like four or five players and they earn close to 100, 100 million pounds, that will be something great. Because right now they've only got in 6 million pounds from Monza for Pablo Mari. If at all they add on the 20 for Xhaka after the arrival of Declan Rice, that will be great for them. And they need to move on players to see that they really get in the signing of Ramel Lavia. If not, Liverpool might seize on this opportunity and obviously throw in what we call a shocker to them. Now, 
There is a journalist known as Paul Brown. He was talking to the Give Me Sport, and this is what he had to go ahead and obviously say about Balogan. Balogan is one of those players that is onto the list that Arsenal are really willing and wishing to sell. This is what he had to say about Balogan. If he generally does think he's ready and he isn't willing to wait, you could see him pushing for a move. But we are not at that stage yet, so I think he'll have to see how things develop in the preseason first. So, Balogan has been so much in the news after scoring 21 league goals in League One, that is for Rennes in France. And um, sometimes I believe he's overrated, but when you see a player at his age, very much confident that he deserves a start at the English national team, and after them not giving him a spot there, he snubs them and goes and plays for the American national team. That sends a message that is really positive and negative to the side of Arsenal. Positive message is this player believes in himself and every manager would love to keep a manager with the hunger of Balogan of really showing that I'm ready to go ahead and really start in every game. But secondly, it's all about his ego. That's the negative bit of it because can Mikel Ateta welcome a player with such a big ego? Because every player that has been having a very big ego at Arsenal has been shown the exit door by Mikel Ateta. And how special is Balogan, right? The only, the only positive ground that he has <coughs> is he's a player that has gone ahead to pass through all the ranks of Arsenal from the Hell End Academy, meaning that he's a, an academy graduate. And academy graduates are always given, they always have a certain soft spot when it comes to this team of Arsenal. You know, you've seen it with Saka, Martinelli, though they just bought him, uh, Emily Smith Rowe, um, and very many others, right? You've seen how they've been fighting for Nwaneri to stay, and he's going to put pen to paper on his contract. So, it comes to understanding that these players have been given all what they need, and if it comes to Arsenal making considerations first, the academy player who was going to have to prove himself is given first chance. But the problem is, even the player that Balogan is looking to go ahead and really dislodge him from that side of Arsenal in that position, Edin Ketia, comes in from the Hell End Academy. He's a graduate coming in from that side. And that leaves a lot of questions in the heads of Mikel Ateta. And that's why Paul Brown is telling you that he'll need to assess the situation after the preseason to see to it that I'm high really close to go on and really gate fit into the team of Arsenal, that is going to be a very huge question for Mikel Ateta to answer as if Balogan comes in through and fires all cylinders, then he'll, have, he'll be left with no option apart from really integrating him to the team of Arsenal. If at all he doesn't, then things will be really difficult for the player of Balogan. And that's why he returned early enough in London. He's in London and guess what he's doing? He's trying to work out and obviously not even return after the first two weeks of July, he's returning next week at Arsenal to resume training immediately. Now, after that, we're having another story of Emily Smith Rowe about his position with the many signings that Arsenal are going to have to sign in the midfield. So, this is what he had to say. He was speaking to the Sun Sport. I did see a lot of talk about my position, but I'm not really sure what they think at the club. I'm happy to play anywhere. Maybe it is inside. Maybe it's wide. I'll be having the conversation when I get back. So, we all know Emily smith Rowe and what he's good at. Um, his first good debut season at Arsenal, where he played that full season, we saw him play, I think he played half a season because a certain player really got injured and was introduced into that central attack midfield role at Arsenal and really played it very, very, very well. But the following season, when Martin Odegaard came in through, Ateta shifted him out of the central attack midfield and played him in the wide left attacking midfield. And guess what? He produced results that he had never produced out in his entire career at Arsenal. When you look at that, in the season of 20. 
2020-2021 when Ateta was there, he played 20 games in the Premier League, scored two goals and put up four assists. You understand? Then the next season of 2021-2022, when he was shifted to play as a left attacking midfielder, he scored 10 goals, his first time to hit double figures and put in two assists. Then, last season, he only played 12 games because of injury, and I never saw him start any game that season, and he put in two assists. So, if you are to really gauge him, he has gone ahead to thrive a little bit better when he's being played as a left attacking midfielder, but he's confident and comfortable being played anywhere. And as it stands, if you're looking at Arsenal, the easiest spot for him to grab is in the central midfield where Grant Xhaka has been playing, and he can easily go ahead and obviously play alongside Declan Rice, Martin Hodegaard, maybe Jorginho in that midfield three. But on the left attacking side, where he thrived and scored 10 goals in the season of 2021-2022, there is huge competition because you can't tell me that he can compete with Martinelli. You can't come out and reveal to me that he's ready to compete with um, with uh, Leandro Trossard that's out. Even Rest Nelson, I think the only person he can compete with is Rest Nelson. But if Rest Nelson gets more minutes, I think he can deliver a lot as far as playing onto that wide left attacking side because he has a little bit of a more skill set than Emily Smith throw. And I believe if Arsenal is to gain a lot from Emily Smith throw, they should play him more centrally in the midfield three hours. He's not selfish, he will get more chances. And obviously, goals are really good at him, are really available or can come out of him. And the positive that I really know about this man, that is um, Emily Smith Rowe, is that he's what we call a very good goal scorer. He has an eye for goal, and you'll never deny that from him. Whether he's playing centrally or wide left, he's just a very good jam when it comes to that. So, guys, tell me your thoughts about Ateta Seid. Ateta caught up into what we call the Romeo Lavia to Arsenal dilemma assessment or assessment dilemma. And will Romeo Lavia come to the land of honey and bread? Because I believe Arsenal right now has turned into the land of bread and honey. What do you think about Balogan and Emily Smith already coming out and obviously referring to his best position at Arsenal as far as next season is really concerned, guys. I sign out for now. See you later. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living to God protect you abundantly. My Muslim friends, may Allah do the same to you. I sign out for now. See you later. Ciao, ciao.